Hello and welcome to My Worst Enemy. Uh, we are back for turn three of Don't Tread on Me. But before I begin, I again made a couple of errors in the second episode. Uh, I just want to point those out right now. Uh, one of those was, and both these occurred in the first battle phase, and one, the uh, first one was the Battle of New York. And when I counted the number of um, uh, British points, strength points to eliminate, uh, for some reason only thought there were two to eliminate, and there were three actually, so I thought that the militia would have um, been enough to absorb those losses in that exchange. So really, uh, one of these Hessian units should have been eliminated along with um, those militia units. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to take one of these out, uh, and I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to take this one. It should have been eliminated. And then the other battle, the first battle phase again, was in Pennsylvania. And I'm not going to change this, but what I did wrong, um, there was a battle in Quaker County, and the rebels retreated, and I retreated them uh, to County 1 of Pennsylvania. That was wrong. Uh, when you retreat, you, you, you can only retreat um, uh, one county away. You, you can't treat more than one county. So I should have gone, those uh, rebels should have retreated into New Jersey. They didn't. I put them in uh, County 1 here in the wilderness, but it's okay. We're going to we'll just pretend like uh, <laughs> we're just going to let that go as it turned out, which still wasn't good for us, but we're going to we're gonna leave it as it is. Th those are the only two things that, um, that I needed to mention. Uh, then the other final thing is I finally have some post-editing capabilities, so you might have noticed there was a new introduction to this video, and uh, now with the, uh, the, the post-editing, I can capture some of these mistakes. Uh, and leave feedback before you actually see the video. So that's good news. Uh, okay, well, let's get started with turn three. Uh, remember that the first thing we do is um, we get our money for this turn. And since we're in turn three, we already have uh, three pounds. Uh, actually, you know what? This reminds me of one other thing. Uh, and someone left a, a, a note to me in the comments section that um, I um, when I was counting down, uh, when I was making my initial purchases, uh, I counted down from 11 to 8 for uh, the uh, 4 pounds that I spent <laughs> for the Hessian units. Should have counted down to 7, so really we only have um, 2 pounds to start with. Uh, so let's start with our 2. If we look at turn 3. It tells us we get 12 more pounds, so 12 plus 2 puts us up to 14 pounds this turn to spin, so there we are at 14 pounds, um, and we now follow our news instructions for turn three, and we look at our turn track, it says that the news item for this turn is Boston evacuated, so I'm going to reach over here, grab the um, rule book and read this to you, this is news item number three, Boston evacuated, so what this is telling us uh, Britain withdraws its besieged garrison and widens the war. Uh, take the three British units from Boston and add them to the British force pool. So uh, we didn't talk about Boston much because you don't really do anything with Boston until turn three. So what happens here, um, these three British uh, foot units will evacuate Boston and become available to us in our force pool, which is good news and, well, I guess bad news and good news. So we'll put those in the British um, force pool. We also get to add uh, two, uh, two strength three naval units to uh, our at sea box. Uh, that's, um, that's down here. Uh, whoops, sorry. That's from our add a play box. These are now being brought into the game through uh, a news event. So two strength threes. There's one and there's two. So we're going to grab these two. We're going to try to grab these two. And these are going to come down now to our um, at C box. So let's do that. And uh, remember Hal was, uh, <laughs> from the from the uh, random events the last turn, he was uh, sent back to harbor. He's, he's doing something else. He's no longer assisting us fight these rebels. But we have two new ships now that we can use. Uh, going back to this news item, we have a few more things to do. Uh, it's just to add um, one smuggler to the Caribbean. So we come back up here and we're going to have an additional smuggler unit uh, that gets placed into the Caribbean. Not good news for us. We don't want to see any more of those. 
And um, finally, Washington is now free to take command of the Continental Armies. So um, we will take him and put him into the uh, force pool for now. So let's take him out of the uh, units out of play box, and now he is available to come into the game. That will conclude our uh, news items for turn three. So takes us to this place, the uh, smugglers phase, and we do have a smuggler. Well, we have, yep. And remember to do that, we simply just roll the die and see which is the C zone he's going to land in. Five. So that is, um, we take the smuggler and put him into the Chesapeake. Oops. There we go. So he is now in the Chesapeake. Uh, okay, and moving right along. Uh, still no French fleet, and now we get to attack the smugglers. So let's see, turn three. Uh, our new target state is New York. We've been directed now that that's where we should concentrate our efforts. We have uh, we do have an Indian unit and a uh, Hessian unit in New York, um, but we really need to get some more British units in there uh, to protect that. To try to keep that under our control, I'd really like to have New York and two other states so that I keep that Liberty Bell from moving forward. Um, but for now, let's see. I have two of these um, uh, two of these uh, fire units, C units, that we can attack with. Remember that it's uh, in this case. It's one pound each to, to use these, and I am definitely, the sea zones are filling up with smugglers. I'm going to pay those two pounds. So that will take us from 14 down to 12. So make sure to do my maths right. Everybody watch me there. And now with these two um, British ships, uh, who do I want to attack? Well, this is get, getting interesting, because I, I had such poor rolls that normally, <laughs> normally I don't have to think about it this much, but... Um, this is this is causing some some difficulties here because I really would love to have this uh, C zone one cleared out and not have to worry about it. And at the same time, I'd like to have these two C zones four and five cleared out because I don't want any more Continentals coming into the states. That's just going to make it worse, and it's going to make it a whole lot harder to control those two extra target states. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and place them both in the North Atlantic. I still think it's important to wipe out or at least to keep clear of that zone. So these are strength threes. That means we've got to roll a three or less for each one of these. So let's do the first one. And that's that's a three. That's good. So this smuggler goes back down to the Caribbean. And this this guy, since he's completed his mission, he comes down to the in harbor box. Um, the second roll. Well, that's not good. That's and leave the smuggler in that sea zone and we bring our ship back down to the in harbor box and that is the um, attack smuggler phase it's the entire naval phase actually because there are there's the French fleet isn't out yet um, so let's go into the British ground phase starting with winter attrition don't have that in turn three so we go to amnesty and amnesty is when you have um, Five, or more than five units of a side in the prisoner war box, you can free uh, the ones that are above five back to your uh, force pool. So uh, the Continental Armies is five only, so they all have to stay there um, for now. We have lots, so <laughs> we can take anything above five out. And uh, let's do that. Um, so we're going to take, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So let's take out. I'm going to take this Loyalist unit back out, and I'm going to take, well, doesn't really matter, well, yeah, he's the same strength. I'm um, just trying to pull out some of the stronger units here, and these Hessians are good um, in wilderness and farmland, so I think I'm going to, you know, no, let's just stick with the British units for now. That will uh, get one more. Let's, uh, yeah, yeah. So that leaves five of our units in the prisoner world box. So I think we are good. So these go back to our available box. We'll have an opportunity to bring those back in through uh, purchasing those. And 
let's get them all back in there. All right, and that is that. Now we go to the uh, paroles part of this, and this is where equal numbers um, we we can parole. So we have we have five, they have five. It's going to be an even exchange here. So it's one for one. So they will get all of their continentals back. So let's put those back into their force pool, and we will get all of these units back. So it turns out everybody got out of prison after all. Good news for all. I'm going to put these back in my force pool. And remember that when we go to buy uh, the units, I have to buy these Hessian units first. Just the way it goes, which brings us to units purchase. <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and grab those and we'll pull them back out. And if you remember, these are just basic um, foot, uh, foot units, so they're, they're a one pound each. So that'll take us down one, two, three, down to nine pounds from 12. Um, that leaves us with nine pounds to spend. And like I said, I, I don't like to spend everything. I like to leave a pound or two in case I have to do some uh, loyalty increasing or some movement. So with that in mind, nine pounds. And looking at these troubled spots here, um, I do want to get more units into New York and I also would like to knock out uh, these two cause units. So let's concentrate on that. Let's let's kind of reinforce New York. So I've already got some units in two of these counties. I want to put a unit into this uh, fort up here. So somebody with this um, the third number position, which is high, uh, like this one, for instance, or this one would be good. Uh, in fact, we're going to grab him. He's a white band unit, so that is... Do, do, do. He is a white band foot, so he's two pounds, so that brings us down to nine. Uh, and let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and place him, because we know we want him to be in this fort. And here's another one that's a town fort, so I'm going to want to put somebody in here to, to knock out that cause unit if I can. Uh, these aren't too bad in forts, but I want somebody with a little more power in there, so let's... Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of money either, so let's try to stick with the um, just the plain simple foot soldiers for now. So let's grab this guy. He's one pound, and we're going to put him in. Um, where are we going to put him? Philadelphia. Yep, we'll put him in there. So uh, we're down to six pounds now. And remember, Congress is actually still in session there. And I stand a pretty good chance of knocking out this unit if I do this just right. Well, depending on what the dice have in store for me. <laughs> so I'm going to put another unit, but I'm going to put one of these um, Hessians in there since he's already out. So we're going to take a chance there. And then remember, um, we do have a smuggler that could reinforce Pennsylvania. So I'm going to come back to that in just a second. I'm going to go down to uh, Carolina and look at this. Uh, we have a uh, uh, loyalist stronghold here that I can take advantage of with this cause unit. He's at two strength points in there. Definitely want to bring at least a Hessian, one Hessian. I'm going to grab another British unit and that's a pound. Every time I pull one of those out, that's a pound. So we're going to grab those and we're going to place them into Carolina. And so those are, those are decent odds. Um, let's see, so we know that we're going to have um, New York will be reinforced by this one smuggler in the North Atlantic. So, kind of want to put one more unit in here. I think I'm going to. What? In fact, I'm going to take the Hessian that we already have because he remember he's good in wilderness. We're going to put him there, and hopefully that will keep. Hopefully, we'll be able to hold New York. Um, I'm still tempted to. I'm still tempted to put somebody else in there. Hmm. What do we got? We still have uh, five pounds, so we could certainly. I think it's. I think we need to. I think we need to put another. Let's buy another of these. Well, they're all one, two, threes. So I'm going to buy with that white band when it's tempting at all threes. That would cost us two pounds. Of, you know.
Well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead. Hmm. Decisions and decisions. Let's go ahead and take him out and let's put him. Da, da, da. Let's go ahead and put him in here. Yeah, you know. Strength three. That'll be four. Let's go ahead and put him in here. Really want to hold New York because we're going to have to hold New York for. Um, Three more, three three turns. It'd be great to stop the Liberty Bell from f going forward for three turns if we can. Um, did I deduct that from for buying him? I can't remember. See, this is where um, <laughs> one of those cases where I forgot again. I I think I did. If not, we'll we'll deduct it later. So uh, I really want to get this white band unit out. Here's another. There's a couple of blue bands. This blue band foot is also two so threes and threes well all right um, I'm gonna see Virginia kind of worries me too we have the smuggler unit's gonna feed into Virginia so we would need to knock out both of these if we lose Virginia I'm just gonna grab you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab one two three I'm gonna spend three more pounds. This will take us down to two. That'll leave me one to correct <laughs> spindle naval transports if I need to. I'm going to take these units and we're going to put this guy in Hampton Roads and I'm just going to take these and just kind of put them in these counties. Hopefully if, if we do get a Continental in there it'll be in one of the counties that are occupied. And I think that's the only thing I want to do as far as purchasing units go. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and unit deployment. We've already done unit movement. This is where you know we go. We can pay to move our units. We can force march them. We can move our uh, horse units around if we have any. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. Um, I kind of have everything where I want it. I want the areas I want to attack. I don't want to reinforce anything. I want to keep them kind of spread out to keep to lower the chances of the Continentals coming in and taking over a state. So let's just go ahead and go to Place George Washington. This is new for us because uh, remember he just came out. So way this works, um, he's going to go to um, the area that has the most British units in it for now. So he's going to go into one of these American leadership boxes. And for now, and let me go to rule seven nine here, and um, this will change. We he, you can check him quite frequently. Uh, just want to make sure that for this first time we do it right. Yes, yeah, so he's going to go in with the three uh, middle states with the American leadership box. He's going to go in this first round where the um, the state with the most British units in them are. Since we're going to be the attackers this time, he's going to kind of oversee his armies. So we're going to take. Um, Oops, he's down here now in the in play box. We take George Washington and he's going to go, where are the most British units? Well, if we look at this, there's four in Virginia. There's four in, are there four or more in New York? So there's four that I can see. There are four, I, I, I'm, I guess it's New York because there's five. So he's going to go to New York. He's going to go here. So he's going to sit there. And that's because there's, uh, if there were a tie, I thought there were four and four. I forgot about the Indian unit up here. Um, if it were four and four, we would just roll a die to determine where he gets placed. So it's pretty straightforward. And this is going to take us to this first battle phase. Uh, same old here. You're probably used to this by now. Uh, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. Uh, starting in New York, there are uh, no rebel units in New York. So there's no battles in New York. We'll go to Pennsylvania next. Well, there will be a battle here. Um, we have this committee of safety we need to do something about. So I'm going to bring the battle marker out. Let's bring our units out. Committee of safety unit out. Uh, remember, this is um, Philadelphia. This is a, this is where uh, Congress is in session. So if we if we win this battle, this will be good for us. It'll put put Congress into flight. Uh, Congress being in Pennsylvania does have the. Uh, we are at a disadvantage because it will move the uh, 
it will shift the uh, combat results column over in the favor of the rebels. So we are in a um, loyalist stronghold. So we will get to add one to our militia roll. Uh, and Pennsylvania currently sits at four loyalty. So we'll move our uh, militia marker to four, loyalty marker for militia to four. Uh, remember we get plus one. And let's see what we get. We get three plus one is four. So that is, uh, da -da. It looks like we get one, they get two. So we get one militia unit and they get two to show up. So um, we are in a uh, fort or city. So that's the third number on the counter and third strength point. It's attackers uh, divided by defenders. We're attacking. So we have one, that's five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven strength points divided by the rebels. They have uh, one, two, three, because they have uh, two militias. So it's seven divided by three. Puts, uh, oops, what in the world did I do? Seven divided by three puts us on the 200% column. And we roll, since we're attacking, we're not gonna use that, we're gonna use uh, our die. And we roll a, nope, see, oops. We rolled a two, we're gonna leave it at that, but we're not in the 200 column. Remember, Congress is in Pennsylvania, so we actually were on the 150. Uh, we were on the 200, but uh, having Congress in session in a state that we're fighting in moves the combat result sample column, it shifts it in the favor of the rebels. So we rolled a two um, on the 150, uh, column and that's a CA which is a counterattack. So a counterattack is um, rebels parry us and they're gonna they're gonna counterattack. What this does, all counterattacks are done on the 100% uh, table. Nothing else changes. You do not shift for Congress again. It's just it's a counterattack, so it is what it is. And this time the rebels will be the attackers. So they're still at um, three and we're still at seven. So that will put them, I'm sorry. No, no, I, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, as I'm telling you not to do that, I'm doing it. Uh, it's just a straight roll. There's no, um, there's no recalculating any of this. It's just 100%. So we roll for the rebel attack and it is a four. It's an exchange, okay. So the rebels were attacking. Um, they won. Uh, that means we're eliminated. Now let's let's not do this again. Where <laughs> I get this totally wrong. We had seven. They had three. So let's go ahead and we they won. So we do get eliminated. That's not good. Uh, so we are eliminated. So now they must eliminate seven. Well, they they have three. They can't do that. They do get to count these towards it. So that leaves them with five, but they still can't do it. So their weakest unit will retain the battlefield. Uh, and the battle marker comes back. The cause unit goes up into the around Philadelphia County. And we didn't want that to happen. I wanted to <laughs> really wanted to hold on to Pennsylvania, but all right, we still have two other states we can try to hold this turn. And because they won. The loyalty of Pennsylvania drops to, looks like they're at three now, so that's not good. Um, one last thing to check, remember Congress was in session, and um, I always forget if they actually have an impact on the loyalty marker, don't think they do, but I just want to make sure, uh, looking in the rules section. Um, yeah, so it just, they basically just shift for now. That's at least in the battle phase, they're not going to have any other effect on loyalty. If we had put them into flight, it would have certainly had an effect, but we didn't do that, so. All right, well, that, did, that didn't work out so good for us, so let's go down to the next state is Virginia. There's um, no battle there. So we go down to Carolina, and there is a battle in Carolina, and we better win this one because it's not looking too good. We need to hold Virginia and Carolina at this point in order to have any hope at all of stopping the Liberty Bell from going up one. So let's take our battle marker to Carolina, place their cause unit in the battle box. And I'm gonna place our units in the battle box. And now we go to the militia phase. So looking at um, uh, 
Charlestown, right? That's where they were? He, I believe so. Okay, um, got to do a better job of marking this. So, uh, their loyalty is what I'm trying to get at next. Dirt is six. So, we are going to go over here and put that at six. And we are in a, well, we get a um, plus one to this if, if we really were in that county. I'm pretty sure we were. In fact, um, no, I don't think we were. I, I really think we were in Piedmont. Because I chose um, the Hessians based on the fact that they were in the wilderness. So I'm pretty, I'll, I'm going to put that in Piedmont. Um, and like I said, I have post editing software now, so I'll make a note of whether I got that right or wrong. So Piedmont, wilderness, uh, and we are attacking. So, attack, oh, you didn't do the militia. Let's do the militia. Um, six, right? So, um, we are down here. I get to add one. No, I don't get to add one. That's where I got confused. So let's roll. And we, ooh. Yikes, that's that's really bad for us. So they get three, we get nine. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, actually, I get to add one to that. Yeah, they only get two. Like, that's a good thing. It, it is a good thing, but it's not as good as it could be. So let's add up our strength points for the wilderness. We are at uh, three, four. So we're attacking. That's four. Uh, and they have... 2, 4, well, 4 divided by 4 puts us on that 100% column table, no shifts, and we simply attack. So we're attacking. We're not going to use that blue die. We're going to use the red one. 6, um, defender eliminated. That's awesome. They lose their cause unit, and we reset this. Uh, we hold the battlefield with both of our units. Bring this unit back. And the loyalty in Carolina will go up one because we won that battle. And we have booted the rebels from Carolina. So um, that's it for this first battle phase. It's not too bad. If things stay the way they are, and they won't because we have all these smugglers, but they stay the way they are now. We have our target state, and we have two other states. That would be, that would be ideal if we can hold on to this. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, so this was the first battle phase, and we resolved all those battles. Now we go into the place rebel phase, and this is where all that hard work we just accomplished gets ruined. <laughs> so, first thing, um, form committees of safety. We do have uh, four of those left, so we can place one of those. And let's see where the first one goes. Uh, state three. See, this is what I mean. Oh no. Uh, no, actually, uh, see, I'm, I'm, it's not C zone three; it's state three. So he's going to go to uh, state three, and let's see where he goes in there. He's going to go to county number one. So county one and two in Pennsylvania now have cause units. Okay, could have been worse. Um, now we go to uh, the place the. Um, Continentals phase. So the way that works is wherever there's a smuggler, we're going we're to place a lot of Continentals um, <laughs> this time. So uh, we roll to start which C zone to start with, and we roll a three. So we're going to start in C zone three. So no Continentals are, I'm sorry, no smugglers are currently in C zone three, so we skip ahead to four. And we do have one here, so we're going to um, shuffle the Continental counters around and then we're gonna we're gonna pull one out and he's gonna get placed randomly inside Pennsylvania into county number four where well, they are stacking up in Pennsylvania and that's all in C zone four we go on to five there's one there so pull out a random continental we roll and he's gonna go into <laughs> that's the worst one he could go into. He's, he's going into an empty county, and I was hoping that um, he would have gone into one of these three counties, and we had a shot at eliminating him. So that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Uh, moving right along, we come down to as a C zone six. And there's no one there, no smugglers there. So we go back up to this first C zone, and remember it connects to New York, which is the um, 
the current target state. So let's see where this continental gets placed. He is going to get placed in, uh, looks like six. So, and this is why I kind of spread these units out in the target state. I kind of wish now I'd beefed up the wilderness a little bit more, but that's okay. Um, see, we have a shot now of at least of getting this continental that was just deployed back out of New York. At least we have a shot. Not saying it's going to happen, but it could. And we go back to, we continue to move down the sea zones, placing continentals. We have two to place in uh, New England. So we pull those. One, two, and the first one is going to go into uh, County 4. There is a stack developing in County 4. And the second one will go to County 5. So he goes in here. I'm still kind of ignoring New England um, uh, at, at my own peril. Uh, it, if these things start, if they go on a campaign, we could, it could spell trouble. That's going to end the um, place rebels phase. Uh, and now we move George Washington again. So basically he's going to go to the state with the most continental uh, units, continental French, but there are no French. So it's the most continental units in one of the American leadership states, these middle states. So they're all tied. So um, way this is going to work, I think they're tied. Let me make sure nobody's hiding under here. No, there's not. Way this is going to work, um, I'm just going to roll die. One, two, three, four, five, six to see where he goes. And we roll a four. So that's uh, three, four. That's Pennsylvania. He's going to come down here. And that's the place rebels phase. And then we go into the second battle phase. So this is now the rebels' turn to attack. We'll start with New England. There's uh, no British forces there, so we go down to New York. This is a very important battle. <laughs> See, we want to knock these Continentals out to hold on to New York. Otherwise, we lose the target state, and we're, gonna, we're not going to stop the Liberty Bill if we don't win this. So. Um, this is in the Hudson Valley, so we're going to pull out the combatants, um, and we got them. I got them backwards. Nope, you're going to come over here. Um, and this is a uh, loyalist stronghold, so we'll get to add one of the militia roll. Uh, nobody in the leadership box, and New York is currently at a nine. That's not bad. I say that's not bad, right? But we know what's going to happen. We're going to roll a one. Well, let's see. So nine. Um, and I do get to add uh, plus one, so let's roll. Ooh, five. So we get a five. That's going to be two and one. That's good for us. So we get two, they get one. This is in a um, farm county, so it's the second number we add up. And the rebels are attacking, so we'll add up theirs first. They have uh, two plus one is three. So it's uh, three divided by, we have, what do we have? F uh, three, five uh, divided by five takes us down to the 50%, takes them down to the 50%. So uh, we roll, they roll, and get a one. Um, attacker eliminated, so that's excellent news. They are eliminated. For them, that means they go to the prison world war box. Uh, we come back out to. I'm spinning the unit. We come back out to uh, Hudson Valley. We hold New York. Um, so, as reset these, that's good for us. New York's loyalty will increase uh, to ten, if it can. Yes, it can. It can go all the way up to. 16. Remember that uh, these states are capped at how high they can go. New York can go all the way up to the top. Uh, Virginia could go to 11. Carolina could go to 12, but uh, we're not there yet. So, excellent. That, that was good. That couldn't have worked out any better. Um, and we're moving right along. We go to Pennsylvania to see if there's any battles there. There are not. Uh, we come to Virginia, uh, and there are no battles. To, well, no, no, no battles in Virginia. And we go to Carolina, there are no battles in Carolina. So that is the second battle phase completed. Now, the dread conduct rebel campaigns phase. <laughs> Here, if you remember, um, 
when the rebels campaign you roll uh, 2d6 and based on that outcome there will be either one major campaign or two minor campaigns so let's see what happens we're going to roll and we get a three and a four so there'll be two minor campaigns in uh, one will be in Pennsylvania so let's mark that and then the other will be in Virginia so um, now that the uh, two minor campaign states have been identified uh, you go into the uh, rebel reinforcement phase so they, they do get reinforcements and since um, since we rolled a well you're, they're gonna get so what happens is they get a cause and they get a continental the cause unit um, gets placed into the I believe the lower numbered um, state uh, one randomly selected Continental Army from the Rebel Force. No, I'm sorry, the Continental Army goes into the lower number state. And then the cause unit will go into the higher number state. So this way. So the Continental is going to go into the lower number state. He's going to go into Pennsylvania. This cause unit will go into Virginia. And you roll to see. Well, no, you don't roll. Uh, this is actually uh, there's a priority here. Uh, so let's get the priority out. This is the rule book. Um, under 11-0 uh, rebel campaigns. So the priority is as follows. Uh, place this continental in the lowest number rebel occupied county. Well in this case it is the they do have a unit in the lowest uh, county so continental is going to go there and then it says move uh, any rebel forces in higher number counties to that county. So all these other units are going to come down to this county. So now there's a stack in county one in Pennsylvania. And now we move on to the cause unit, same thing. Um, it's going to go into the lower number, um, lowest county. In this case, it's uh, two because there is a continental there. The uh, rest of the counties have British forces. So that's where he's going to go. And there's no one else to move in there with him. And so now um, we go back up. To Pennsylvania and it's uh, you have two choices here does the state contain uh, British units or not here it doesn't contain British units so we look at, at that paragraph and um, it tells us if it does not have any British units all rebels in that state must be placed in the critical county and you remember that critical counties were the ones that were marked with this blue die so this entire stack goes to the around Philadelphia location and that's uh, what they do then we go down to Virginia. It's the same thing. They're going to go to the um, uh, no, not the same thing. Because remember, that there are British units here. So looking at the British units in a state, um, there is an attack priority. So um, these units will go. We check the priority. One, attack British units in the same county. They're not. There's, this county is empty. To attack the nearest British force to the left, uh, that would be lowered number county. So they do have that here. So they're going to simply, they're simply going to come over here to Piedmont, and there will be a battle fought there. And we would really like to win this battle because, it's, like I said, we, we still have New York. I'd like to hold on to two other states to keep that Liberty Bell from, from advancing. Uh, so let's. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. This could be bad if we lose because they could go on a uh, on a rampage in in Virginia and we don't want that. Uh, okay so um, let's check where we are. Piedmont is not a loyalist state or county. Uh, Virginia is currently at seven. Uh, we don't get a plus one to our die roll so let's see what we get for the militia call. A three. Uh, right in the middle. It's, uh, we get one, they get two. And then uh, we didn't bring out our battle markers. We should have those already over here, right? So, um, nope, you don't get to go to the leadership box. We're going to put you in Piedmont. And these two units come out. And we add up our um, strength points. And with the rebels attacking in a 
fortress or a city actually or a town I should say so town's the third number so we add up their strength point it's two three four five so they have five and we have remember it's attacker divided divided by defender we have three four uh, so that divided by four is I must have hit I keep hitting divide twice why did I say it was five divided by four <laughs> divided by four is 1.25 remember you round down and I'm really doing this intentionally to show you the round downs I probably shouldn't keep doing it but I, I don't know it's easier for me to if I do it that way um, so it's a roll on the 100% column and they are the attackers so they roll and they get a two uh, that is attacker retreats with the possibility of a pursuit so and this is where we kind of messed up last time uh, you can only retreat uh, really one county but we're, we're gonna go back and I'm gonna pull up these retreat rules again and read them uh, read it so that we make sure that we try to get it right this time so that was a and let's remember what county we're in so I'm gonna put these guys back here for now. The battle marker is still going on there. We have these two units that um, are going to retreat. So let's see. Our order of priority is if British units, no, British units are not retreating, so we skip number one. Number two says otherwise retreat to a county containing only friendly units. Well, there's no other county in Virginia that has friendly units to the rebels. So you go to three, retreat to an empty county, and it says only rebels can do this. Well, they can do that. They can go to Tidewater, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Remember, then it's one county. They couldn't go anywhere else. If we had another county that were empty uh, in uh, Southside or, or Hampton Roads, they wouldn't be able to reach it. So it has has to be an empty county, and they got lucky here. I think they, they got lucky. They might, might not be so lucky if we get after them. So they do retreat. Uh, we reset all of this malicious stuff and um, I think we have a decision to make now because this was an attacker um, retreats but we could pursue if we choose so what that means is I can choose to pursue the Continental Army into Tidewater uh, do I want to do that well currently we are in Piedmont and as you can see this British foot unit has a strength of three in this county if we move him into Tidewater that's wilderness he's gonna have a strength of one <laughs> so it would be um, we would be attacking at one they would be defending at four uh, so that would put us on this column and the best I could hope for is an exchange which uh, uh, it, it it could knock them out and like I said I really I've got New York we don't have Pennsylvania uh, only way to stop that Liberty Bell there really is to get these rebel units out of Virginia am I feeling lucky <laughs> is the question one of the reasons why I love don't tread on me so much and this is this is rare in a solitaire game this game makes you think I mean there are some hard choices to make here and this is this is a perfect example I mean I could just play it safe and I could sit here in Piedmont and risk you know the Liberty Bell going up and taking care of it later or I could pursue these rebel units and try to eliminate them and and stop that Liberty Bell from moving so <laughs> you are faced with some hard decisions um, you know I I'm gonna I'm gonna gamble I'm gonna do it I'm gonna I'm going to um, we're going to pursue so this will take this will be another battle and it's just a new battle um, you know did uh, see did I move we won we won the first battles so that actually would have um, their their uh, loyalty would have increased from the first battle since we won it now the second battle it could decrease if we lose it but we are going to we're going to pursue and it's the wilderness and it is a um, um, da, da, da. so they're they're now at a loyalty of um, eight 
takes us down to here. And um, no modifiers, just whoever shows up shows up. Uh, <laughs> yikes. Okay. Uh, so two more militia units show up. I this really don't like the blue die anymore. I, I guess I need to start rolling the red ones. Um, okay, so now we attack. So we're the attackers, and, and we are in uh, wilderness, so it's this lower number. So it's one plus zero is still one. Um, I'm going to regret this, right? So it's... Um, it is wilderness, right? <laughs> so it is one divided by... And we're still going to be on that really, really small column. I'm just doing this to, just for the heck of it now. And they're at one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so we all know what this is, but let's look at it anyway, just because <laughs> it's so low. Um, doesn't matter. I guess it can't get any worse. Uh, we need a five or a six here. Um, and let's see what we get. They were attacking. Let's roll our red die. We need a five or a six. <laughs> we get a four. Uh, okay, so um, its attacker retreats with the possibility of pursuit again. Um, so that means we retreat back into Piedmont. And now they have the option to pursue. And let's go back to our pursuit rules. Will they pursue us again? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, okay, Rebel, um, da, 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 here, I lost my page, sorry. Okay, retreat party, here he goes. Um, so we were in uh, Tidewater. Uh, British units are not retreating. That's number one always, so no. If we go number two, otherwise, um, retreat to a county containing only um, friendly units. And what did I say? The attacker retreats. We were attacking, so this is... Um, yeah, I moved us back there and shouldn't have, because we're actually doing the, we're, we're actually doing the retreating again. Um, so, let's go back to number one. British units are retreating, and the French fleet is not present, um, so we don't worry about that. Otherwise, it says con uh, retreat to a county containing only friendly units. Well, that we can do. Remember, it's one county, and we can retreat one county in the uh, higher direction here. It'd be um, south side, so we're going to retreat to south side, not Piedmont, um, because we had the friendly units there. That's why we were able to do that. Uh, and now, so as far as the pursuit goes, um, will they pursue us? Let's see. We are going to see if they pursue. Um, attacker is... Attacker, I'm looking in the rule books to make sure I get this right again. Um, I'm trying to find out... There is a... There is a um, an option here for the uh, rebels to pursue. Rebel pursuit. Okay, so 8-10-1. We've retreated to our county that has our friendly unit. Uh, does that county contain both rebel and British forces? Well, no, it only contained a British force. If the refuge county does not contain units belonging to the battle winner, which in this case was the rebels, then the battle is over. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's the battle. They're not going to pursue. They're going to choose to stand in Tidewater. And they do. So we're going to put the Continental back, the cause unit back, the battle marker goes back, we reset the militia unit. So they won that battle in Virginia, which means this marker comes right back down to seven. So it's sort of a ping-pong there. Um, they were able to to hold on, and they kept Virginia, which I didn't really want to see. So, um, that is the end of the campaign phase, I believe. Going back to the campaigns, looking, yep, battle occurs, this now ends the minor campaign. So they're not going to, um, they don't, in the major campaign, there's the chance that the, the stack would continue th to march through the state and attack, but not, not in a minor campaign. So they, they, this will end the minor campaigns and the rebel campaign phase and uh, totally so conduct rebel campaigns yes that is over that's going to take us to the logistics phase trading with the enemy 
Um, so anywhere we have any state where we have a lobster unit, and now it looks like we have one, two, three states that do, we can spend whatever money we have left over to raise the loyalty of that state up to a maximum of four. Uh, here we could do two, it's per county, so we could do two to New York, uh, two to Virginia, or one to Carolina. Um, Pennsylvania, unfortunately, no. I'm not going to spend any money to do this, so let's move right along. Naval transport, so here um, we could move, we could pay uh, a pound to move our units around. I'm not going to do that either. Um, and then we go to naval reset. Move all of our at seas, or I'm sorry, um, I believe it's our harbors back out to sea. So these three units will come back out to sea. Resetting those. And that takes us to the liberty phase. Okay, continental enlist enlistments expire. That'll be next turn, not this turn. Uh, here we go, determine state control. The moment of truth. Um, so, we do hold the target state. Uh, that's a rarity in and of itself. But we also need to hold two other states. Uh, so, we need to have uh, total control of two other states. We don't have New England. We don't have Pennsylvania. We do not have Virginia. See, if we'd won that battle and kicked those rebels out of Tidewater, we would have, we would have done this. We do have Carolina. So, we have the target state and one other state. Not enough. So, this Liberty Bill will rise to three. And remember, nine is is the end point for us. So it does rise. Oh, unfortunate. And now we do our uh, state loyalty modifications. For each state, uh, New England, it's all rebel controlled. Uh, it drops to zero. <laughs> it's rock bottom. Nothing we can do about that. New York is completely in British hands. Uh, their loyalty will be increased one more. Pennsylvania is completely in uh, rebel hands. Uh, so Pennsylvania will be decreased by a loyalty. I want to see that's that's getting bad. Um, Virginia, no change because there's uh, units from both sides in Virginia. Carolina, it's in our hands. Their loyalty will increase by one. And that ends the modifications. Uh, determine control of Quebec. We still uh, have Quebec has not changed hands. Uh, you'll note I still I have done nothing with these units. You can move these units out and uh, use them in the other states to, to battle. Uh, normally in this game I leave these two sitting here. It could be a mistake, I don't know, but most cases I never touch those. Um, but it is something to consider. Check for victory or defeat. Well, it's only turn three. That's not turn nine yet, so we're good there. This brings us to the random events phase. Um, and we are now rolling uh, two dice because the French have not entered yet. So remember we, on our random events table, uh, we will roll uh, two dice to see what event we get. We roll a four. So we come up here, look at the table, and it tells us a four is um, tar and feathers. So the reactionaries and frigates diverted. I really don't want to see the frigates divert us stuff anymore because that's what's killing us, and we seem to roll that every single time. Um, tar and feathers. Uh, mob violence and oppressive state laws drive a loyalist underground in, or into exile. Roll 2d6, and the corresponding states will decrease their loyalty by one if there is a rebel unit present. So, um, and if we roll doubles, it'll be uh, two for whatever state is rolled, but let's do that. Uh, let's do that. Uh, let's, well, it's already on two. Roll, and two states chosen are three and four. And I left these out accidentally, but that comes in handy because, well, no, I said states. Let's put these away. Thought I was going to get away with one there. Nope. States three and four. Um, so that's uh, Pennsylvania and Virginia. There are rebel units in each of those states, and I believe it told us if that were the case to lower their loyalty. Yes, so starting with Pennsylvania, um, and actually I can, s well, yeah, it goes right back up, right, because we lowered it down to two. Um, it's back up to three. And 
four was Virginia. There are rebel units in Virginia, so it gets boosted to eight. And oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I wish, right? This was it too. This this is tar and feathers. They're after loyalists, not not um, not rebels. This actually drops because there is a um, there were, there were rebel units there. I was I was doing it backwards. Um, and uh, what I say, Virginia I would actually be down at six now. So yeah, that's if there's rebel units in those states, then um, they decrease loyalty. We had that one earlier. Um, then we go into Southern Reaction Harry's, and this one is, uh, let's see, blah, is this um, another chance to decrease loyalty, it looks like. Um, I believe, oh no, this is not a dice roll, this is just a straight uh, change in uh, loyalty. So, this is, um, Southern Reactionaries, right? Yeah. So it says to decrease Virginia and Carolina loyalty by uh, one. So we'll do that. Um, Virginia and Carolina by one. And who else? New England and New York. Uh, it says to increase their loyalty by one. So New England um, well, that brings him back up to one. <laughs> New York, they're really going up fast. They're at 12 now. That's that's pretty good. And it says, then roll a die for Pennsylvania. And if it's even, their loyalty will go up. And if it's odd, it goes down. So uh, even, it will go up. So Pennsylvania, it will go up. Pennsylvania, their loyalty goes up to two. And then that's all for that one. And finally, frigates diverted. Um, one of the three strength British units is moved to the end harbor box. Cannot be used. That one really hurts. Um, one of the strength three units is now in harbor. Really would have liked to have used that unit because, um, as you remember, it would help me knock out uh, some of these smugglers. And as you can see, there are now five smugglers in the sea zones. That's horrible. You, you don't ever want that. And there's another one that's going to come out because there's one still in the Caribbean down here. Uh, that's that's really bad news. Uh, and that is the random events phase, which takes us to the end of the turn, which means we, basically what happens is we move this back to st uh, start the next turn. Uh, it will be game turn number four when we come back. And um, not looking too good overall. We have we have the Liberty Bell at three and steadily increasing. Um, we have tons of smugglers in the sea zones. I am failing to keep them out, and that's that's really hurting. Uh, I do have the target state for now. It will be the target state next turn. It's, it's good that I have it for now. I need to try to hold that. Need to take back Pennsylvania and need to get these units out of um, Virginia if I can do that. And it looks like. Um, Looks like that's going to be a little difficult right? with all these smugglers, and that's really what I think is killing me right now. So, um, that's turn three, and um, we'll be back soon with turn four. Thanks so much.